Good morning. This is All India Radio Kohima. The morning news read by John Siantan. Nagaland In-Service Doctors Association, NIDA, has decided to resume its adjudication with effect from July 18th over the issue of superannuation age of government doctors. In a press release, NIDA said all district units favour the proposed adjudication. NIDA said it is left with no option but to resume the adjudication in a form of delivering emergency services only with effect from July 18 to 20. However, it threatened for a total shutdown of all health units in the state for an indefinite period from July 21 if there is no positive response from the state government. The association stated that it had written to the Principal Secretary Health and Family Welfare on April 26 and the Chief Minister on June 10 to review the Cabinet decision on the superannuation issue and expressed its opposition and inability to accept the Cabinet decision on raising the superannuation age of all the medical doctors from 60 to 62 years through re-employment. An idea noted that this kind of dispensation was tried and tested in NHM up to 65 years of age, which proved to be a total failure due to hierarchical issues. The association questioned the state government that when the increase in superannuation age has been implemented in most of the northeastern states, why Nagaland did not. It further pointed out that any officer retiring at additional director rank and above will have hierarchical issues in the district hospitals where the controlling officers are of joint director rank if implemented. NIDF therefore said the demand is 62 years for all without any criteria and that it would stick by its decision. It also demanded that effective date of implementation of any cabinet decision should be very clearly mentioned. Meanwhile, the association warned that there will be a severe shortage of manpower in public health facilities in the state. Nagaland Transport Department has prohibited the movement of any transport vehicles beyond a three-axle along the national highway stretch from Dimapu to Kohima to Maugade from July 18 to August 11, 2022. The prohibition on vehicles also include the semi-tractor articulated trailers, which is also a three-axle vehicle, but whose carrying capacity is 30.5 tons or more. Further upward journey of the said vehicles will not be permitted from Dimapu, with effect from July 15 midnight. The Motor Vehicles Department, in coordination with the Concerned District Administration and the Police Department, would enforce strict implementation and should cause appropriate traffic signs to be placed or erected under Section 116 of the Motor Vehicles Act 1988 at suitable places. Kohima District Task Force, DETF, for implementation of total ban on all single-use plastic in Kohima will impose penalties for defaulters not complying with the government's order on ban of identified single-use plastic items for both rural and urban areas of the district. This was decided during its meeting held under the chairmanship of Deputy Commissioner Gohima Shanava C. In the meeting, the DETF decided that business establishments found selling or using the banned identified single-use plastic items will be penalised with 1,000 rupees for the first offence, 5,000 rupees for second offence and 10,000 rupees with cancellation of licence for the third offence. The meeting also decided to have a sitting with Gohima Chamber of Commerce and Industries and NGOs. Further, it decided to disseminate the required information in various medium or platforms to create awareness on the banned plastic items. While noting the views and opinions shared by the members, DC said that collective efforts and assistance from all concerned NGOs, churches and other stakeholders will be required for the successful implementation of the exercise. Barames Warren Ayer yesterday took charge as the new Chief Executive Officer of Niti Ayuk. A 1981 batch IS officer of Uttar Pradesh Kader, Ayer has worked with both the public and private sectors. 
He was Secretary in the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation in New Delhi during 2016 to 2020. Speaking on the occasion, Ayer said he is honoured and humbled to have been given the incredible opportunity to serve the country again as CEO Niti Ayuk. Ayer said he is deeply grateful to Prime Minister Narendra Modi for another chance to work under his leadership towards a transformed India. That is all we have in this morning news bulletin. Have a good day.